Deixem, agruparem tot pel debat de després de la pausa, les preguntes, que segur que n'hi ha moltes. I dono la meva paraula al professor Clàssic. El seu nom és bastant difícil de pronunciar. Sí, ja ho sé. I que ens parlarà sobre les protestes estudiantils a la Iugoslàvia del 68. Thank you very much and very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you first of all for inviting us and for hosting us. Uh, this is my fourth time in Barcelona, but uh, uh, every time I again fall in love with this city. So thank you for inviting us. Uh, secondly, uh, my apologize for my English after Mary's, especially to audience and especially to, to translators. It will be a uh, little bit different English, but I uh, think you will understand me. Um, and yeah, my, my, my name is m very interesting. It's very hard for, to pronounce for you all. It's Hrvoje, uh, which is very interesting. I ask, uh, wh wherever I'm uh, traveling all around the world, I ask people for similar examples. Uh, so my name means men from Hrvatska, from Croatia. So it's like Francois in France. So. Uh, it's very interesting that uh, all around the world there are not so many uh, similar cases. For example, in Spain you don't have similar, or in Finland, or in Sweden, or in uh, Poland. So it's I Italo, for example, in Italy, or... Okay. Um, so, uh, I will start with, with our last, or our first meeting in Ljubljana, a uh, month ago. Uh, and uh, as historian, uh, of course, I, I was aware that uh, post-war world uh, was not uh, uh, simple as sometimes we, we want to show it, uh, black and white, uh, east and west, uh, communism and capitalism. And uh, uh, during our meeting in Ljubljana, uh, I again realized uh, that post-war post -war world or Cold War world uh, was really more in shades than uh, in, in colors. And uh, exactly 1968 maybe could show uh, so many uh, uh, differences and similarities between Western and uh, uh, Eastern countries. But then uh, Mary uh, mentioned one very interesting, or she asked very interesting question about 1968, May 1968. It's really interesting that if we are talking about 1968, for Spain uh, or Catalonia, it's a question, was it really 1968 at all? For France, it was May. For Yugoslavia, it was June. For Poland, it was March. So uh, today we have, let's say, official narrative of 1968 in the world because of French influence and uh, all around the world there are documentaries about May 68. Uh, it seems that all around the world everything happened in, during the 68 in the May, but it, it wasn't the case. Then uh, the, the name of this project is uh, In Search for Freedom. As we realized, and you will see in, from my lecture, and especially from uh, my colleague from Poland, that freedom in 60s for Spanish students, for Yugoslav students, or for Polish students were, uh, was different, uh, different definition of freedom. So uh, what, what does it mean? Wh what freedom they were searching? Yugoslav students, Polish students, or Spanish students? Um, and then again, uh, if we are in 60s, at the end of 60s or 70s, and if you ask anybody in Yugoslavia what is Spain, they will answer it's a Western capitalist state. And Poland was Eastern communist state. And Yugoslavia is, let's say, some more to the communist East, but something between sometimes more west, sometimes more east, and, and the most of time both west and east. But uh, as we heard from Mary, and you will hear from, uh, hear from uh, 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 our colleague, yeah, uh, 
1968, if we compare, for example, um, situation in Spain, Poland, and Yugoslavia, you will see that uh, 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 Yugoslav 68 was more similar to Western capitalist uh, <coughs> societies, like, for example, France or United States even, than to Poland or uh, Spain. Uh, Right now, in Croatia, we have a lot of problems with dealing with the past, and especially dealing, dealing with the socialist past. And uh, if you ask uh, uh, right-wing politicians and right-wing right population, and they are not a uh, minority, they are majority, they will, uh, they will say that uh, dictator Tito was equal to Hitler or Stalin. But on the case of 1968, you will see that uh, Franco's dictatorship wasn't comparable with Tito's dictatorship. dictatorship uh, the in intensity of dictatorship in Yugoslavia was much lower than in Spain. So there were so many shades, so many uh, different aspects of uh, not only 68, but Cold War period that we can say it was bipolar, so East and West, communism and capitalism. Uh, before I start, uh, I will uh, with 68. I will uh, so just to 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 show you uh, the the specific position of Yugoslavia in the Cold War period. In uh, uh, just be before 68, this is uh, one CIA document uh, declassified. Uh, 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 the name of the document is Yugoslav Experiment. It's on 10, 15 pages. And I just put one uh, insert, uh, uh, which maybe uh, can show us really in, in few sentences uh, the, 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 the core of this Yugoslav specific situation. So Yugoslavia is a communist state in name and theory, but in practice it's a fully independent state which has rejected most of the socialist experience of other communist states, including the USSR. It has deliberately removed a large portion of its economy from direct centralized controls, and despite it, its retention of one-party political system, it has largely freed its people from arbitrary authority. So this is uh, not one, uh, 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 let's say, communist uh, utopist in Yugoslavia, and he is thinking what uh, it should be, but this is from one or team of CIA agents who were in the Yugoslav uh, uh, American Embassy in, in Belgrade at, at the moment. Uh, if you, if, when I show it to right-wing politicians right now in, in, in Croatia, they, they don't want to see it because, no, it, it, was, it was like, it was the same in Bulgaria, it was the same in Romania, Bulgaria, uh, Czechoslovakia, Soviet Union, and in Yugoslavia. But, uh, as, uh, it, it was really interesting to, 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 to listen uh, Professor Nash uh, showing that 68 was one of those years uh, which uh, didn't start in January 1st and didn't stop on December uh, 31st. So the causes and the consequences, sorry, is it? Oh, sorry. And so the causes and the consequences of um, uh, uh, 68 were maybe uh, more interesting than the, the events during the May, June, or uh, March uh, uh, 1968. So uh, I will begin uh, my presentation with uh, just a quick uh, introduction to uh, 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 Yugoslav history before 68, just because it's very important to understand why 68 was so different in Yugoslavia comparing with, for example, Poland or Hungary, Romania, and even uh, uh, Spain. So, uh, you know, Second World War in Yugoslavia was a liberation war, but it was also revolution. It was socialist revolution. A Communist Party took power, and the new federation of six republics and two provinces uh, was funded. 
uh, it was multinational community, Serbs, Croatians, Macedonians, Montenegrins, and so on. Of course, one party system, one leader, cult of personality of Josip Broz Tito. And it was very important that for the first three years after the war, Yugoslavia was Soviet satellite number one. Uh, for example, the, the, the center, the headquarter of common form was in Yugoslavia uh, when, when it was uh, founded. But then 1948 is maybe this turning point in Yugoslav socialist history when Tito, uh, uh, when this Tito-Stalin split uh, happened and this break with uh, Soviet Union and uh, the moment when Yugoslavia uh, was totally alone. Uh, it wasn't West, it wasn't anymore East, uh, without friends both on West and East, and it uh, 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 emerged uh, Yugoslav political elite to, to first of all, to uh, 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 remain communist, but different and better communist society than Moscow type of, uh, of socialism. Um, so, in the 60s, a lot of <coughs> economic and uh, uh, mainly eco economical reforms were introduced and uh, something really uh, interesting happened. Uh, Yugoslavia uh, was, uh, as, as one economical expert from that moment said, it was bastard uh, between uh, uh, capitalism and socialism. It was, he said, Adam Smith without private capitalism or laissez-faire socialism. So uh, it was really something between, but uh, so with foreign investments, joint ventures, it was all not possible in Bulgaria, uh, Poland or uh, Soviet Union, of course. But on the other side, what happened as a product of these economical reforms uh, after a decade of 50s with very high rates of um, industrialization, uh, 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 industrial growth, and uh, I don't know, uh, standard of living. In 60s, after these reforms, uh, the, the progress uh, start to, let's say, collapse. And uh, first, after 15 years, after the war, unemployment rates uh, go high. Uh, people uh, went uh, for work, uh, uh, try, uh, uh, searching for a job abroad, especially in uh, uh, Germany, West Germany. And uh, social differences uh, appeared, uh, this red bourgeoisie, uh, red, uh, red, red bourgeoisie red uh, bourgeoisie in, in Yugoslavia. So this difference is between political and let's say economical elites and society. Uh, but on the same time, it was a period of political liberalization uh, in Yugoslavia and uh, uh, especially reorganization of secret police and for example from 1966 till uh, uh, next six, seven years, very, very, uh, or even no uh, political uh, uh, cases in, in, in courts uh, were in that period. Uh, criticism was, uh, let's say, uh, much more possible than in the, in the years before. Uh, but it also it was a period of growth of nationalism, and a lot of protests. So, uh, talking about the students before 1968, it's very important. Uh, you, can, you can see that uh, student population uh, growth uh, it's from 1945 to 1968, a uh, number of students uh, rise 10 times. Uh, in uh, 1968, Yugoslavia was third country in the world uh, by a uh, number of students in total population. First was the United States, Soviet Union, and then Yugoslavia. Why was that, that so? Because uh, after 1945, a uh, new society was built, and uh, they need uh, new intelligentsia, they need socialist experts, and of course, second reason, uh, 
because of ideological reasons, they want to show that uh, now university education is open to everybody. Before the war, it was just for elites. Now it's for everybody. But then uh, growth of uh, student population uh, hasn't been followed by growth of um, student dormitories, uh, libraries, uh, classrooms, number of teachers, and so on and so on. So uh, these uh, problems uh, were, let's say, basis for protests in 1968. And then, uh, uh, like, in, like all over the world, uh, intergenerational conflict. Uh, you know, I will try to explain you very plastic. Uh, if you were born in Yugoslavia in, let's say, 1930, you were born in one of the poorest countries in Europe. It was the kingdom of Yugoslavia. So you grow, uh, you 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 uh, you grown up in 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 very poor society, and then Second World War, with so many casualties. But let's say 20 years later, or 25 years later, uh, Yugoslav society uh, uh, really changed. Uh, modernization, industrialization, uh, uh, social policies, educational policies, and those who were born in 1930, uh, they were in 1968, they were 38, they were uh, really in, in, in a power, and they couldn't understand the young generations born in 1945 when they were protesting in 1968. They, they were asking themselves and, uh, and the public, what are you protesting for? Could it be better than it is right now. So, in Yugoslavia, 68 was not in May, it was in June, but uh, it, would, it would not be a true, a completely true to say that everything happened in June. Because if you uh, uh, follow uh, 60s, especially for, from mid 60s, you will find roots of 1968, and that's one of uh, differences between, for example, Spain, Poland, and Yugoslavia. For example, Mary uh, mentioned Marcuse, they were reading Marcuse uh, here, but in 1968, Marcuse was in Yugoslavia. He was in, in, in guest in Korshula summer school because this new left um, in, in Europe uh, has its reflection in Yugoslavia in praxis philosophy, uh, Praxis Journal and Korshula Summer School. So Korshula is one of islands, very beautiful islands. Come and see it during the summer. Uh, so uh, 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 summer school where Ernst Bloch, uh, Lefebvre, uh, Marcuse. So uh, philos uh, uh, philosophers from west and from east, uh, theologists, uh, political scientists from both west and east. They joined in Yugoslavia and they were discussing about the Marx. Uh, I think Ernst Bloch once said that while they were in uh, Korčula, he said it was Dionysian socialism. We were drinking red wine, uh, looking at the sea and uh, discussing about Marxism. You, you can imagine uh, uh, discussions. So, uh, but of course, June 68 was the, the key moment. And uh, what were the <coughs> demands, student demands? Uh, first of all, I, I, I will uh, split it in changes at university, demands for changes in university and changes in society. Uh, I already mentioned why changes in university, because of uh, poor standard living and uh, uh, low participation in uh, educational process and so on and so on. And then something which I think it's very uh, useful to stress right now in 2018, be, uh, because, for example, a few years ago there were huge student protests in my my country, in my faculty, in uh, and uh, uh, strike. But then uh, then they asked me to to give them a lecture about 1968 as as a kind of <laughs> manual what to do. Uh, but 
Then they ask me, what is the difference? Journalists ask me, what, what were the differences between student protests in 1968 and in 2009? I said, the, the main difference is that uh, students in 1968, students, they were uh, so much um, aware, they were so much interested in society at all, not only about their own problems. In 2009, Students were protesting because of scholarship. And it was huge. And of course, it's not only a student problem, it's educational problem and it's problem of society. But uh, they, I can't imagine them protesting for inequality in society, for, I don't know, uh, some wars all around the world. Those guys, those uh, girls and, uh, and uh, boys, uh, students, they were protesting for, uh, uh, because of problems in their society, not only in their society. Uh, maybe this seminar, this round table, or how, uh, is also showing uh, the, uh, and pr uh, proving my, my thesis. Uh, how many students are here right now? And uh, it, believe me, the same scenario will be in, uh, in Zagreb, and the same scenario was in Ljubljana. Ljubljana. You, you can't motivate them uh, for anything. Uh, okay, if this uh, round table is on Facebook, maybe in some virtual, virtual world, then it will be maybe uh, 100 uh, participants. But to, to come and to ask and to participate in discussion in live, that's a problem. So, one, I have to stress one, one uh, let's say, um, one message, uh, the main difference between student protests in Yugoslavia and Western countries, France, Britain, uh, United States, in those capitalist Western states, they were protesting against political system, against economical system. In Yugoslavia, students were not protesting against the system. They were protesting to protect the system. They were not, so people in France, they were against capitalism and a lot of them for some kind of socialism. In Yugoslavia, they were not against socialism. They said, we believe in communist party, we believe in program of communist party, but we think you're wrong. You uh, went in the <coughs> wrong direction with your way of, of communism. That's the difference. And for example, difference of dictator uh, in France, Charles de Gaulle should escape France uh, during the student protests. In Yugoslavia, students were against political lead, but not against Tito. They were shouting to Tito. And for just to to uh, to, to end uh, this short presentation, I hope we'll have a discussion later on. Uh, there are so many differences. So when you compare 1968 in the world, uh, you, you should find some uh, unique, some uh, similar aspects. For example, it's always uh, protests against Vietnam War, protests against, against uh, nuclear armament uh, for better society. But then you will find also many uh, very specific uh, claims. Uh, very specific topics in Belgium, uh, students uh, in, in uh, Valon or Flandern universities language issue. Uh, in Japan, uh, students were so much against new uh, Japanese uh, American treaty uh, friendship because they were afraid it will uh, uh, it will cause their ent entrance to the Vietnam War. In Yugoslavia, uh, there were many differences, and in, in Poland, you will, you will hear also a uh, lot of specific topics. But also, there are many unique, very, not similar, but very, let's say, unique uh, uh, um, uh, topics in, in, during the 1968. For example, uh, methods of activism. Uh, world in 1968 was really global village. 
and uh, students in uh, Yugoslavia, they were reading about uh, the protests of their colleagues in France, in Sorbonne, or in Colombia, or in U U UCLA, and uh, methods like strike, like sit-in, like teaching, like free discussions in convents, uh, these slogans, uh, paroles, and gestures, and this uh, 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 faculty occupation. It was for the first time in, in 1968 in, in, uh, in Yugoslavia. Um, <coughs> iconography, a lot of Che Guevara, a lot of Marx, a lot of Fresa, although it was a communist state, but, uh, uh, and for example, when we are talking about Che Guevara, it was one of uh, question, question, questions of these old revolutionaries. When I said, why do you have uh, T-shirts with Che Guevara? We have partisan heroes. Uh, why do you need Che Guevara on, on, on the shirts? Um, and then there are some uh, also aspects which are very, very interesting inside Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia was so heterogenic. Slovenia was, by standard of living, it was more like one middle European country at that period. But Kosovo or Macedonia were... Uh, by some analysis, they were more close to Asia. So in one state with 20 million people, you have so huge differences in standard of living, in education, in, uh, I don't know, uh, n rate of illiteracy and so and so on. So in 1968, when you look, when you, uh, uh, look on 1968 in Yugoslavia, it's different in Ljubljana, Zagreb, Belgrade, or in Pristina, in Kosovo. Role of professors. In Belgrade, it was professors, not only students in 1968, they were not supporting, they were leading students in 1968. In Zagreb, not. Workers, not at all. Uh, it was the huge, huge problem. In France, uh, a lot of worker uh, unions, they join and uh, give uh, support to uh, students, but in Yugoslavia that was the key problem. Uh, you know, students, they, okay, we are sorry because you are on the streets and uh, it's a shock for us because why are you protesting? But you're students and you are in, in few thousands. But in Yugoslavia, as a socialist state, where the, the, the basis of the state is a working class, if working class start to protest against their avant-garde, their communist party, then it will be the end of, of the state. So uh, students uh, uh, tried to, 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 to be in contact with, with workers, but in the factories they put guards uh, just not to, to, uh, to, to come in, in, in touch. So, and for the end, just about repression. It's also very interesting. Uh, I wanted to ask Mary, but you, you can now maybe answer me. This photo, that, that photo when uh, this is in the Capucin Monastery or something, and there is a priest, but there are uh, some policemen or who? So, so who are policemen there? Uh, what are they doing there? Yeah, please, yeah. Yeah, well, well because they want to uh, occupy and get rid of the students who are inside and the intellectuals who are inside. Okay. Uh, and some of the monks type attempted to negotiate. Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, it's really interesting, you know, during the... Yugoslavia was one party system. It was, let's say, for me not, but for majority of people, dictatorship. But during the student protests, in one week, no policemen at all, uh, nobody, it, it was university autonomy. And it, it, it couldn't happen that some policemen entered any university, any faculty. So uh, it was really interesting. Then repression. Uh, nobody, nobody, you will, you, will, you will hear right now what happened with intellectuals, professors, and some students in Poland. In Yugoslavia, nobody was in jail. And nobody was expelled from the job. Few eight professors were expelled from Communist Party and they were transferred from university to one institute, not without a job. So it also showed these differences 
1968, but in this Cold War period. So thank you very much for, uh, for uh, attention and hope we'll have discussion later on. But uh, I think I just provoke uh, um, um, discussion not only about the, the 68, but about uh, these uh, shades of world then, but also right now. Thank you.